Hello, hello lovely people. Very good afternoon from here, Nigeria. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm not sure, it should be afternoon there too, right? So good afternoon, <laughs> don't mind me. Uh, so good afternoon, how are you doing? And so good to have you guys um, all the way from Ghana. I hope Ghana is beautiful, it's um, beautiful afternoon. It's fair weather here, and my definition of fair weather is that it's not raining. So when it's not raining, it's fair weather for me. <laughs> so I wouldn't know how the weather is wherever you are, but I hope you are having a great time, you're enjoying your day. And um, you are doing good. So nice to meet you guys. So I'm just going to look through the chats to see um, who is here and who is not here. Um, I'm seeing Kimo Gatse. I hope I pronounced the name properly. Nice to meet you, Kimo. And um, Julie, hello, Julie. And um, Latifatu and um, Idi Abdukari and um, Hanatu, Anna Ayaba, and um, everyone that's here. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm not here alone. I'm here with my team. I'm here with Sandra. Sandra joining us from Lagos, Sandra. I'm here with um, Simplis. Simplis joining us from um, Down the Cameroon. And I'm here also with Judith joining us from uh, Ben Republic. So, and, uh, and you are from Ghana, so it's an all African affair. <laughs> all right. So nice to meet you guys once again. And yes, you should say something in the chat because there's only way I can know that you're here. So if you are not, uh, we are not saying something, I wouldn't know you're here. I would just be saying that you know, I have a certain number of people present, but I wouldn't know the exact people that are present. Okay, so do me a favor, all right? Say something in the chat. And if you can't chat, it means that you've not possibly activated your YouTube channel. So what you need to do is to uh, log into your YouTube using your Gmail. And now you're going to see a place as opposed to chat on the call. So what you need to do there is just tap on it and then refresh the YouTube. You see something like activate channel. So tap on it and then refresh. That means close the YouTube and open it again. And then that's it. You'll be able to chat because I'm going to be asking you a few questions and I expect you to ask me questions. Um, I expect you to ask me questions while, uh, while we are doing these lectures together. So thank you so much once again for joining us. And do us a favor. Please look at the thumbs up button and smash it. Okay, do that for us. And um, look at the uh, look at the subscribe button. Look at the subscribe button. You are going to find um, a share button around it. You are going to find the subscribe button rather. So look at it, click it, and turn on the notification. Okay, do that for us too. Now the third one is look at the share button. Click on it and. Uh, copy the link and invite a friend. Please smash the like button. Thank you so much. Okay, and this is a big shout out to the organizers, LYLF Ghana. Thank you so much for making this happen. And um, for all of you that will be here to enjoy the sessions with us, thank you so much in advance. We'll be having eight sessions for you. And um, all of them are really, really packed up. It's very good content that would help you help your brand, help your business. So I would encourage you not to miss any of them. Remember, you're going to be having certificates um, for attending each of the sessions. So this, the attendance is going to come along the line, okay? So stick around, enjoy the content. When the attendance comes, please fill it and fill it correctly. And um, so that you will have your certificates um, for attending all these sessions. And thank you so much once again. You have not called your name, it means you didn't say anything, so please say something and let me know where you're joining us from, okay? And um, so I'm seeing Anne, Anne is joining from Kenya. I'm seeing Ingare from Botswana. Oh, Botswana, oh, nice to meet you. I'm seeing Becky, Becky Mfun from Ghana. I'm seeing Abdul Karim from Ghana also, Tamale, Ghana. I'm seeing Ramatu, Ramatu is um, from Kumasi. Oh, you're visually impaired. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, but it's a great place for you to be so that you can pick up some skills that will help you. Thank you so much, Ramatsu. And um, I'm seeing also Gyan, Gyanwa. I hope I pronounced that properly. Please, if I couldn't, please don't throw stones at me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Gyanwa is joining us from um, Ghana. And um, Idris is joining us also from Ghana. 
So nice to meet you guys. Okay. And uh, yeah, my name is Udeme, and I'm joining you from Abuja, Nigeria, and we are going to be doing this very interesting topic together. Build a reputable brand and sell online. Build a reputable brand and sell online. Remember, I'm going to be asking you questions. And um, so grab a pen, grab a paper, a piece so that you can jot down the few ideas you'll be sharing from here. You need it. Okay. All right. So let's get down to business. So we are going to be doing this in three different segments. First part, we are going to be defining what a brand is and why should your brand be online. Then you are going to define how you can find, we are going to decide how you can find your target audience and then you are going to learn how to generate sales on social media. So we'll be doing this in the next couple of minutes. Remember, I have questions for you and I expect questions from you as well. Okay, so my first question, my first question. So how are you currently making your business known online? Business people, how do you make your business known online? So far, so good. How do you do it? So let me know in the comment section. Let me know in the chat how you currently make your business known online. Anybody? Please say something. Um, it's not very healthy. Let me speak about the English alone. <laughs> Hello, Stella. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, so say something. And um, do well to engage Judith in the chat. Engage Sandra and Sylvie also in the chat section. Okay, so I'm here waiting to get your replies. How are you currently making your business known online? How are you doing it? Are you doing WhatsApp? Are you doing social media? Which of the social media platforms are you using? Are you doing Facebook? Are you using Instagram? Are you using, um, are you doing word of mouth? Which of the platforms are you taking advantage of? Uh, do you have a presence on the Google business profile? Please share with us in the chats. Nice to meet you, Stella. Why are you joining us from Stella? Please let me know in the chats. So Gian said, I'm having a Facebook page, Instagram page, and a website or oh, a complete business model. <laughs> well done again, and thank you so much for sharing. Okay, any other person wants to share, please go ahead and share and share it in the chat. Uh, let's make it let's make it busy, let's make it bubbling so that we we'll make it fun at the end of the day. Um Becky said, I'm having advertised, I'm actually advertising my business through my WhatsApp to do TikTok. And Facebook. Thank you so much, Becky, for sharing. I'm um, still. I said I regularly. I post regularly on WhatsApp stories, Facebook, and Instagram. Yeah, beautiful places. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I may have my reservations for some of those places, though. But it's all good. They are all online platforms. So you do word of mouth. Um, Gary, word of mouth, Facebook page, WhatsApp. Very powerful. Very powerful to word of mouth. You directly influence who you have. Um, you directly send messages to people that you have influence over. And it's a very powerful means of marketing, even though it has its restrictions. Okay? Thank you so much for sharing, Gary. Okay, Stella is from Imo States, Nigeria. Thank you so much, Stella, for joining us. Another person from Nigeria. I think there are just maybe three here from Nigeria. Myself, Sandra, and Stella. Any other Nigerian? Wave to the Lord if you are here. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so second question for you. So what advantages does um, online presence bring to your business? What advantages does online presence bring for your business? So share with us what advantages online presence brings to your business. What do you think, what have you, what have you discovered so far so good that um, you've benefited out of, of being available online, doing your business online? So share with us also in the chats. In the chats, yes. That's the only way you can communicate with us, actually, <laughs> on YouTube, because that's the way YouTube is designed, right? You may not be able to speak to me verbally, so you can just um, say it, um, type it out over here. So what advantages does the online presence bring to your business, bring to your brand? 
Um, Hannah to said, I'm advertising my products on Facebook page and WhatsApp status. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, Idris to said, word of mouth, Facebook and WhatsApp. Thank you so much for sharing. Idris to, okay, who else is saying something? And let's keep all the comments, the responses, the replies. Let's keep them coming. What advantages have you had? Have you experienced so far? So good. Okay, so maybe I'll just go on while waiting for your replies because we have a lot to cover. Okay, so drop your comments, drop your responses, drop your questions as they come. All right, so let's do this and let's make it fun. Okay, and uh, I'm seeing a comment here from Becky. Um, so far, that actually helped me get customers on fan here. Yeah? Though they aren't many, but they are consistent in their purchase. Thank you so much, Becky, for, for sharing. You bring, you get to have a wider reach, right? You create more awareness to a wider audience, people that don't necessarily need to see you. Okay, so you also gain visibility. Thank you so much, Gary. Yes, because everyone is online and you are also able to assess a wider range of customers. Thank you, Yakubu, for sharing. A wider range, yes. Spread, spread your wings just everywhere. Okay, so let's go on, let's go on, let's go on, let's go on. So what is brand identity? I know you've heard about brand, my brand, my this, my that. So what is brand identity? So it's the visible elements of a brand, such as the colors, the designs, the logos, that actually identifies and distinguishes the brand in a customer's mind. Now, take your mind to any brand that crosses your mind right now. Just take your mind, maybe Google, Maybe Samsung, uh, maybe Mercedes, and think of a color that has stuck in your memory about that brand. Think of a design that has stuck in your memory. Think of a logo that has stuck in your memory about that brand. Now you might you be a witness that all of those, all of those identity, all of those elements of gas is what actually makes that difference between um, that particular brand and another brand that does the same thing they do. Benz, yes, Benz is beautiful. You see something around with something like Ranaja and Benway. <laughs> and that, that, is, that is a Benz logo. And it's different for Toyota, right? Toyota is a simple one with net, net, net globe. And it's different from Tesla, okay? It's different from, we are talking about the online space, different from Google, that have their spelling as Google. Different from Samsung, they have the spelling of Samsung with one color. Google have, Google with, um, I think, white is white, the touch of blue, green, yellow, and red, right? So all of this is what actually makes a particular brand um, stand out. It's what makes it unique. But more importantly, what you should know about identity, what you should know about a brand identity is that it goes beyond just, it goes beyond just the colors, it goes beyond just the logos, it goes beyond all of that. So it just encompasses a whole, um, consumers' complete experience with both the products, the services, and the customers, and the mix of associations they actually develop as a, as a result of all these interactions. So, the brand image that a company actually achieves is a powerful tool for gaining market leverage. Now, somebody would define a brand identity as your reputation. Now, take for instance, um, you want to go buy pig milk. I'll prefer pig, I'll buy pig milk. Um, it's costlier, yes, but I'll buy it <laughs> uh, against the other brands. Okay, so you can mention the rest, Lawyer, the Cowbells, the Mixi, and the rest of them, three crowns and the rest. Okay. Because they've proven over time, they've proven over the years to be a good quality product. So I'm going to intentionally um, spend more money to get, um, to get pig milk against the rest. Now, what am I trying to explain there is the whole experience that the user has. The colors, the images, the logos, all of those are beautiful. Yes, but it goes beyond that into the into the, the consumer's entire experience, the products, the services, and how the quality, how they enjoyed it, and what will make them, what is that drive that is going to bring them back to your brand? So you should think about that also, beyond the colors. Think about that. Okay, so several factors you need to consider when you are building your brand online. You need to choose a name. What is your brand name? If you don't have a name yet, you need to pick one. Very importantly, you need to be identified as something. Remember just having a logo of, um, having the logo of a Mercedes in my head, and Mercedes doesn't have a name. 
<laughs> so you need to have a name, okay? Now, have a logo. If you don't have a logo, you need to create one. You can't afford a designer, create one using Canva, canva.com. So on canva.com, you're going to see a truckload of templates with designs. So just pick one of them that is good for you and just do the editing that you want and then make that your logo. Now use colors and shapes and other visual elements in your provision and craft the language in your advertising. Every brand has a tone. Google will call it googly. You are playful in a way, and then you are still sending the message across, right? So every brand has a tone. Some brands want to be very official, and some brands will be very, very playful, and some brands will be just a mix of both, right? Some brands will be more of educating, some brands choose a tone, right? You need to have the tone that you communicate um, to your audience. And then you also need to train your employees, the people in your team to also um, know how to, well to interact with customers the way the brand should do. Okay. Okay, so why should you be online? So as a business, you must grab all these opportunities that can profit you. Now you've mentioned, and for those of you that mentioned the advantages that came to you by having your presence online, so you get to um, develop um, how your business buys and sells products because that is where everybody actually is. You can always get to reach out to your customers, can get to advertise, can research your competition, and all this information are all available with um, the analytics part of it so that you can get to study how these activities of customers get they get to interact with you and then you can use those results to make wise and business decisions. Now again, why should you be online? Why should your business be online? You get to have the privilege to get people to buy and sell or buy products from you or you can get to sell your products. And you can also research um, your customers, can research your competitors, you can also reach out to your customers as well through ads, you can reach out to them through organic content and a whole lot more, you can get to reach more audience, you have a wider reach, people get to see you more, and they, that you have more presence online as a business and as a brand. So a couple of benefits of having an online business. Now, it's it's, it's cheaper to operate um, an online business. So all you need to do there is, you don't actually need to move your products and your services to a warehouse. So the transportation is cut off, vehicle shipment is cut off, and possibly if you don't have anybody on your team, you're just alone, the staffing is cut off. So you have, you run it at a very low cost. All you need is maybe your PC or maybe your phone and internet, and that's it, your game. They also have this 24 hour availability where you can get to reach out to your customers at any time of the day when they're conversing with you. That would be different if you were obviously in a physical shop, right? Because you won't be able to um, meet the people that you're supposed to be talking to. Let's say you stepped out. You're not a spirit. <laughs> so if you stepped out and they came and they didn't find you, there's nothing they can do. You can't meet them. But if they were conversing with you online, maybe they were messaging you through the Google business profile or through your Facebook or any of those platforms, you can easily reach out to them at real time. Okay? And then again, you also have the advantage of having a better customer support because at the end of the day, you have people that are engaging with you, asking you questions, dropping comments about uh, what is, what's maybe what they don't like about your brand, what they don't like about your business, and um, maybe give you suggestions if they're kind enough. Some of them are not always kind. If they're kind you know, giving you suggestions on what they think you should do, and some of them will throw stones at you, you know, normally. <laughs> they will throw stones at you. So, so you also have that privilege to get feedback. From that feedback, now you're going to be able to deduce what you should do rightly, okay? So you also have the ability to have a better customer support. And now where could you be online as a business? Now you've mentioned Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and all those platforms. All of those are classed under the social media, okay? And someone said he has a Facebook. So Facebook is also one of those platforms where you can get to have a presence online and now you can also have a presence on your business directory. Online platforms that actually show up um, they actually handle whole business data, business information. So anybody that is searching for it can actually find it. Um, another of, of those platforms could be the Google Business Profile as well. Or it can also be present online as a business through e-commerce platforms. You can always reach out to the likes of Jumia, Gonga, and the rest of those places so that you can also add your business to the list of vendors that they have. 
All right, so I'm gonna be taking the first post to answer your questions. If you have your questions, please throw it into the chat right now. And I'm here and everyone is here. Um, Judith is here, Sandra is here, Diana is here. Oh, Diana is here and um, Simplice is here. Please, everybody, uh, Diana and Simplice are in Cameroon. Please do well to engage, engage them in the chats. All right, so I'm looking through. I'm hoping I'm going to find some questions. Okay. Okay. Okay, Jupas Busy Limited. Thank you so much for sharing this on YouTube. Perez from Kenya. Thank you so much, Perez. The knowledge is the knowledge I've gained since I've since I've joined Jamie Farms is enormous. Technology has made doing business in the conference center very easy. That's absolutely thank you so much for sharing, Perez. And um, if you have questions, please drop it in the chat right now. Hello, Maureen. How are you doing? Thank you for joining us. Where are you joining us from, Maureen? And um, Uluwa Dami Larry, are you there? Okay, we have a third Nigerian. Thank God. Yes, so um, Dami Larry, um, and who was, who was there? Dami Larry, Stella, and myself. So we are three now. So I'm expecting some more Nigerians. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So if you have questions, I'm here. Okay, Anin Doon. Okay, nice to meet you, Annie. Okay, we have a food Nigerian. <laughs> Thank you, Anin Doon, for joining us. And um, your name sounds very familiar. Thank you for joining. Thank you for always showing up, Annie. Thank you so much. So we have the food Nigerian, and I'm still expecting some more. So if there's anyone that is supposed to be here and is not here, please reach out and let them know that we are here. And um, we'll be here for a little... A little more time. Okay, so since there are no questions, oh, Judy is on Nigeria too. Okay, this we have the fit Nigeria. <laughs> you plan on say anything now, so you need to say something so that I'll know that you're here. All right, please say something in the chat. Let me know that I have my brothers and sisters close by. <laughs> I'm not all alone. Okay, hello, Alice. Alice is from Ghana. Nice to meet you, Alice. So, Alice, you have a lot of siblings here, right? So, just do well to converse with them. So I'm still sitting for your questions. If you have any questions, please trade it in. Um, or we just go on, and then I'm just going to come back shortly to answer some more questions. I have two more breaks. This is the first of the three. So I have two more breaks to come back to answer your questions, all right? Okay, so let's talk about finding your audience, finding your target audience. So identifying your target audience as a business um, can actually help you to craft your marketing strategies, can help you to define who your core customers is, can help you to define who your core customers are not, okay? So instead of you spending money, spending resources, trying to cater to everybody, and every customer, def defining your target will also go a long way to help you to be more intentional, more focused, it's called laser light focused, and then you just make the whole marketing more personal, so that you're able to reach the most likely people that are going to be purchasing your products or purchasing your services, okay? So let's talk about who your target audience is. So who is the target, who is the typical target audience of yours? So share with me in the chat who a typical target audience of yours is. And what do you think makes him your audience? So share with me, who is your target audience? Now, my target audience is going to obviously be different from your own target audience because um, we have different products, right? We have different brands. Possibly, we belong to different industries, right? So I'm going to be different. I'm going to be having a different set of target audience from you. So share with me who a target audience of yours is, and we're going to break it down. Um, hello, Alice. Um, hello, Faith. Hello, Wotima, uh, and um, Bro, all from Ghana. Nice to meet you guys, my Ghanaian brothers. Okay, so how do I build my business profile on Google? Okay, um, um, Rafia, we are going to be talking about that, not in today's session, right? But we have a particular day dedicated for that. Hmm? But meanwhile, what you need to do is just to head over to at, sorry, business.google.com. Business.google.com. I'm sure Diana or anybody on the chat can share that link with you. So let's just, just head over there and set it up. It's a very simple process business name, your category, um, your working hours, your phone number, your location. And then you begin, when, after you finish setting, you can begin to send contents out. Very simple. 
but we'll talk about that in more details, all right? So just hold it up, not today. That's why you don't need to miss any of the sessions. They're all going to be very, very important and very, very useful to you. Um, please, are there certain things I should look out for when designing a logo for my business? Zachary, thank you so much. Brilliant question. Okay, what you should look out for basically is a design that is catchy because they're designing a logo. Um, some brands will have different um, different tests. Some people will just want to have a logo of something that looks like what they do. Some people want to spell their names to stand to be like their logo. Take uh, dressing from Google, take dressing from Techno, from Samsung. So their name is their logo. So it all depends on what you want. It's about creativity. You can take um, you can take dressing from different brands. Okay, then you then choose what you want. There are really no rules to logo apart from. Uh, okay, I'm speaking from a layman. I'm not a professional designer. <laughs> I do play with Canva once in a while, though. All right, but you may need to think about what you think works. Something that can make you unique. Something that can make you stand out. Thank you so much, Simplis, for sharing that link. Thank you so much, Zakari, for asking. So let's go on. Let's go on. Let's define who um, an, a target audience is. So target audience are this group of people identified as being your likely customers of a business. So the buying process is always in the hands of these customers. And you as a marketer, you must be able to create and targeted personalized experiences for people if you want them if you want to grab their attention. Remember, you are in a sea of other people in your industry. Other people are doing the same thing you're doing, targeting the same customers you're targeting. And of course, if you are a new business, your customers are with your competitors. So you need to find a way to grab them, grab a piece from this one, grab a piece from this one, grab a piece from this one. How do you do that? You show them the side of your business that is more interesting than what all those other guys are offering them. And they'll come to you. <laughs> So show them the unique side of the business. It's called the unique selling point. What is special about you? Why should I leave pig milk to buy a cowbell? So pig milk needs to do something, and cowbell needs to do something extra. I should attract me. Then I'll go to buy pig. I'll go to buy cowbell and leave pig. So show that unique side of your brand, of your business, so that they can, they can draw those your customers out from your competitors. Okay? Uh, so target audiences share similar demographic traits including but not limited to the age, not limited to gender, not limited to income, not limited to location. And then there are various types of targets um, audiences. So the audience can be defined in accordance to interests, right? So it can help you to make data-driven um, highly personalized messaging that allows you to connect into audience in meaningful ways that can drive brand loyalty. So these separate groups um, are based on various types of interests, hobbies, attendant preferences and all of that. And you also have another set of audiences that are, that are grouped under the purchase intention. So this will help you to understand your audience's pain points. So you can also get to create um, tailored messages that addresses their needs. Could be purchase um, purchase intention, such as a new, maybe new entertainment system, or maybe a particular car or system, something like that. Or you could be grouped under subcultures so you understand subcultures of some of your audiences, so you can get to understand who you're actually trying, exactly who you're actually trying to connect with. So subcultures refers to groups of people who share a common experience, such as the music, music genres, and um, entertainment fandoms and all of that. So these are the three categories that target audiences are being grouped. And then you need to also understand that there are various roles that different target audiences need to play. Now there's a decision maker and there's a supporter. The decision maker is that person who ultimately makes the purchase decision. Well, the supporter, the supporter may not have the power to make the decision, but they will have a heavy influence on whether or not an item is purchased by the decision maker. For instance, a baby and a parent. The baby is going to have to make sure that the parent knows that he needs toys, she needs toys. He doesn't, the baby doesn't have the money to buy toys, right? So the parents will now be the decision makers who are actually going to make the payment for toys for the babies. So the toys, the baby is now the supporter while the decision makers are the parents. For instance, um, if you're a feminist, please forgive me on this particular example and don't throw stones at me. <laughs> a boyfriend and a girlfriend. Um, a boyfriend would not need 
um, human hair, Brazilian hair, um, curly stuff, and um, full fringe, <laughs> and all of that. Don't ask me how I knew them. <laughs> okay, so now the, the guy doesn't need all of that, right? So let's, the society makes us believe that the guys always have money. So the guy needs to pay for that for the lady. So the lady becomes the supporter, where the decision maker in this case is the guy, the guy that is going to spend the money. So your message when you are trying to market must appeal to both parties so that the supporter can actually make that influence to happen or the decision maker to make the demand <laughs> for the money to come out. So your message must appeal to both parties when you are trying to market. Okay? I hope you got that. So six ways for you to determine um, your target audience. So you need to also analyze. Number one, you need to analyze your customer base and carry out clients. Um, interviews, carry out client service, hear, hear from them. Also, you need to conduct market research, identify various market trends, see what is happening in your industry, and jump on a particular trend. You shouldn't be against the trend, okay? Then you need to also analyze your competitors. You need to profile your competitors to see what they are doing that is good, you copy it. What they are doing that is not good, you copy it and make it good to make you stand out, right? Then you need to also create personas, okay? creates customer profiles that also defines who a typical audience, typical client of yours is. Define who your target audience is and who a target audience of yours is not. You need to draw that line so that you're not shooting the message to the wrong people. They need to also use the Google Analytics to be able to find out the kinds of people that are interacting with your website. So how do you create target personas with the right demographics? So on that, on that personas, you need to draft out the age, let's say personas or profiles is more like um, giving a fictitious uh, characteristics on a name that doesn't exist for instance i'm in the real estate industry and my name is you give an image a name let's say the lady that you're seeing on your screen now let's say that JD, that lady's name is josephine josephine is obviously not going to be less than 25 years we are having young millionaires now so Josephine should not be less than 25 years. And Josephine should possibly be in the political class. Josephine should be um Josephine should be married. Josephine should be living in Nigeria, certain city in Nigeria, maybe Abuja, maybe Lagos, or maybe any Josephine in Nigeria. Josephine should belong to the political class. Josephine should be making an income range of between 500,000 naira to 2 million naira. Josephine should maybe be a PhD holder. Josephine should maybe Josephine should be watching YouTube. So you need to draft out who a typical audience of yours is. Now that, that design you're making there is called a target persona. 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 You hear it in different forms. Persona, customer profile, or one of those things. So you need to draft out who yours is and who yours is not. Draw that line so that you're not shooting your message to the wrong people. Okay? Hope you got that. All right, so second pause for your questions. If you have some questions, please straight into the chat for me. And um, thank you, Diana, and um, uh, same place for the great job. Okay, so I'm looking at a question from Yakubu. Yakubu said, I am my Mona from Ghana. Nice to meet you. My target audience are men and women in their respective age. Thank you so much for sharing. I wish you shared the industry you belong to. Thank you so much for sharing the Canva link. And um, Ulua Damilari, my target audience are both new dot tellers and fashion houses because my business includes providing specific services like weaving, buttonhole, making services, and sales of tailoring items. Thank you so much, um, Ayudele, for sharing that. Um, please help me leverage with websites. Please, can you break down what you mean? Uh, can you can you refresh that question? So let me understand you better. That is from Gary. Thank you so much for asking. Please refresh so I understand you better. My target audience are those at the chop bar, restaurants, supermarkets, etc. Becky. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing, Becky. Um, Becky. Sorry, <laughs> I almost called you Becky. Thank you so much for sharing, Becky. And uh, yeah. So any questions? Any questions for me? Any questions for the team? Before we go to the last part. 
Any questions so far? So good. So remember to drop your on your audience persona, your target audience persona, so that you know who your audience is and who your audience is not. All right. Okay. So let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. We are waiting for your questions. The attendance is going to be dropped any moment from now. So look out for it in the chat so that when it's dropped, remember to fill your names correctly um, so that you don't have the wrong attendance. Mr. Obong, please, I'd like to have your WhatsApp number. I have some challenges I will have, have you. I want you to assist me with. Okay, Stella, and you're going to have to reach out to your team lead, and then they're going to find a way to link you to me, All right? Thank you so much for asking, and thank you for finding me useful. <laughs> okay. So just say my name is with Deme, and so that you won't cut your tongue with the other part. Just call me Deme. Deme is fine. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the last part. All right, let's do this. Let's say I can generate sales on social media. So how can social media actually benefit your business? How can social media benefit your business? So a lot of you, I saw you're using WhatsApp. And somebody said TikTok also. Somebody said Facebook, somebody said Instagram. So social media is just that great place that can help you to get more results from what you're doing. So what is social media? Is that platform, that interactive technology platform that allows the creation or sharing and exchanging of information or ideas or interests and other forms of expression via virtual communities and via networks. Now we have a couple of benefits of you for you to use the social media. You can reach larger audiences, even people that you don't get to see, you can find them. And then you can have this direct connection with your audience, you can create organic content, content you don't need to necessarily pay money for, right? Uh, you can run ads too. You can run ads, you can have access to paid adverts. And then you can also post organically without paying money to those platforms. And then you can build your brand and your brand reputation. You can drive traffic to your website and vice versa. From your website to your social media from social media to the website. Then you can also evaluate your performances on social media, okay? So all of these are the truckload of benefits that you get to do, that you get to have when you are doing business on social media. So it's also important for you to note that before you get to publish posts, and before you get to develop a social media strategy and consider, you need to consider the following questions when developing that strategy. So you need to state what your goals are and how you are going to be able to measure your goals. Your goals are important. Your goals need to be um, SMART. SMART uh, is an acronym. It means specific. It should be measurable. It should be achievable. It should have what it takes, right? It should be, it should be realistic also. It should also be time-bound. Then what type of content do you want to send out there? Is it written content? Is it video content? Is it graphic designs and all of that? And what channels do you want to prioritize? Do you want to focus on... Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or do you want to focus on TikTok? Who will create those contents when you design them? Right? You need to decide who will create them. Do you have got it text to create them? Or do you just want to go ahead? Um, just want to go ahead and um, do it by yourself. And if you want to run ads, what is your budget? You need to answer all those questions before you launch out to your social media platform. Okay, so let's see how I can make the most of the internet. Take advantage of the available tools. Social media is one of the most powerful tools that is available in, in our age today. And then automated and customer service is also available on various platforms. You can also have the transparent e-commerce platforms. Jumia, Conga, and all those platforms are also very good. You should also take advantage of analytical tools and reporting tools, likes of um, Google, uh, Google, Google Analytics, the likes of Google Firebase, we have an app. Analytics is for websites, Firebase is for app, right? You can have tools, um, like maybe what you're running ads, you can check the analytics parts to also find out some data. And then also take advantage of customized user recommendations, the ones that can come through your feedback, um, through feedback from customers, maybe on social media, maybe on your Google business profile. So you need to take advantage of all this that the internet actually offers to you. All right, so a few data that should raise your concern as a business person about social media. So see, Facebook is still at the top. Facebook houses, Facebook has about 2.94 billion people every month. It hosts about 
about that every month. Well, people say Facebook has lost a um, server. Well, yeah, to some extent, yes, because it's not that popular again. A lot of other platforms are out there. Instagram, they are still the owners of Facebook anyway. Um, but we check to see, um, check to see brands like check to see brands like TikTok. I saw one of you mention TikTok. Now you're doing the right thing. If you are not just dancing on TikTok, if you also have your business on TikTok, you're doing the right thing. TikTok has caught a lot of traction in the past one year. And of course, TikTok is now the number one most popular platform. It may not have the numbers, but it holds a good um, strength in popularity against every other one, right? So you need to think about how to take your brand out there. TikTok, Facebook, WhatsApp, Messenger, and the rest of them are doing very, very good. So check where the traction is. I'm sure I can drop a link for you to uh, maybe just run a check and confirm something on we are social. So get this link. Let me just drop this link. Um, I'm sure you'll find this useful. Um, so check out the content from this link later on. Find it useful. You get to see what is trending in this space, All right? And then you have a couple of data from um, platform social media in South Africa. So in South Africa, I have about 55.9 million people. 27 million are internet users. 7.7 .7 million on Twitter. 14 on Facebook. 14 million on Facebook. 8.7 on YouTube. 5.5 on Instagram. So you are not using social media to run your business. Now you should, this is much of a reason why you should think about it. Okay. So uh, maybe you don't, you don't, your business doesn't need to be online, but one thing is sure that your audience is looking for that your business online. So you need to find a way to position yourself out there. So now these are social media platforms where you can get you know, to sell your brand, to sell yourself. Twitter or Facebook. Twitter, Facebook. So Twitter is that place that um, the who is who is there. Look for any president of the world, you find them there. The almighty Putin, the almighty Joe Biden, Donald Trump, President Obama, Emmanuel Macron of France. Just mention any name, you're going to find them there, okay? The who is who is there. All, all the big brands also have a presence on Twitter. If you want them to respond to you fast, if your customer can slow, you want any brand to respond to you fast, just go to Twitter. <laughs> Call them up, they'll answer you very, very fast, okay? And um, Facebook is that platform also where you can get to do your business, can post pictures for free. Same thing with YouTube. So all you need to do there is just open an account, facebook.com or twitter.com. Upload a picture, maybe a profile picture, and a cover photo, something that best describes um, your brand, your image. You can add the link to your website and Twitter. Same thing with your Facebook, right? So people can click from your Facebook to your website and vice versa, okay? So constantly it gets to share content, share content, share content. LinkedIn is a professional platform that can get you jobs. You can get to connect with industry experts in various industries across every walk of life. Okay, so it's a place that you need to take advantage of, especially if you are hunting for a job or if you want to be recognized as an authority in your space, right? So you get over there and share good content and um, Instagram also is that place where you get to um, be able to catch some fun and um, you know send out content, mostly video. It's more like a lifestyle platform. Video, um, you know, images, design, pictures, traveling, wherever you are, you can always send things to your Instagram. And just one, one thing, one other thing you should know that all these platforms have their spirits. What I mean by spirits is they have their tones. The language on LinkedIn is very corporate. <laughs> Everybody wants to be well behaved on LinkedIn. But when you go to places like Twitter, everybody is very vile and very violent. <laughs> so you need to be careful when you're on Twitter so that you don't trust things that easily. Okay? And then uh, you can live your life normally on Instagram and on Facebook as well. All right. So some questions to, for you to consider before you start out. Um, before you start out on social media. So you need to consider which networks do I choose? Or um, do I want to be everywhere? Do you want to have a presence on all the platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere? It could be overwhelming. So what, what we always advise most times is test on one, test the content on one, check the results, go to the next, see the result, go to the next, 
then when you gather up the statistics from all those places, you'll be able to know, okay, my audience is here. My audience is not here. You then begin to focus. Then what activity do you want to do on your social media and how often do you want to be doing those activities? Do you want to be dancing? <laughs> do you want to be lecturing people? Your content, of course, is supposed to educate, entertain, engage, inform, right? So you shouldn't, you know, once in a while, just try to be not sales every time. It's not always about the products. Sometimes jump on a train, jump on a conversation, you know, once in a while as a brand, okay? So which group or which community do you, should I join? What kind of reactions do I want to elicit in my audience's play, in my audience? Is it pleasure? Or you want them to just catch for you just want them to be gloomy, that they want to determine all of that by the tone. How much influence do I want to have? And which influencer do you want to? So you need to find that influencer and try to be tagging along with that influencer. Okay, when the influencer makes content, you can always retreat or maybe do a content and tag that influencer that you love. Maybe once in a while, maybe after a long time, if they find you consistent, they can also retweet. So that at the end of the day, they bring their audience to you. Okay? And then about the frequency, you need to always be available. You need to be consistent with your content. Okay? You can't post today and come back in three years. Then. It doesn't work that way. The algorithms of the internet dra draws what you constantly view to you. It works that way for a brand. They are always available, always available. People will tend to be drawn to you because you're available. I always make this instance. Leave your social media account, your personal social media account. Don't post anything for six months. Come back after six months and start posting. That early period is going to be a real struggle because you must have lost a lot of traction. Right? But if you do it always, always, you should be able to have a good traction that should be coming to your, to your, to your business page and to your brand. Okay, and then you should also determine the frequency of how much, how long you want to post, right? You don't want to post um, today and come back in two weeks time, no. So have a frequency, plan out your calendar, plan out your content calendar, you need to plan it out. You don't just wake up and make posts. <laughs> plan what you want to post and how you want to post it, when you want to post it. Very, very important. You can plan it out for the month, plan it out for the week. And then it's going to even have scheduling and scheduling tools to be able to set it up so that when it's time, it just post itself for you. So you need to work out all of this for social media. Okay, so I'm taking the last post to answer your questions. And now what are your next steps? What should you do next? What you should do next is to reach out and learn some more, all right? So learn some more. The link is going to be shared, learndigital.withgoogle.com slash digital skills slash courses. And then Follow us on social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Then you're going to find out how we do some of the things that we preach, right? And um, yeah, thank you very much. If you have any issues, reach out to hello at impactor or PR at impactor.org. So I'm coming to the chat to answer your questions. If you have any questions for me, before we call it a day, I want you to drop them in the chat for me now. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so the products, let me check on myself, me some questions. I deal in cosmetics and my target audience are men and women. Okay, thank you so much, Fidatsu. And kan Kanuma, thank you, male and female, age 20 and above. Okay, Mavi said the product I sell is for women and it's sanitary pad and called Echo Period. But I move house to house to help me with more strategy to build it. And it's eco friendly and everyone must get one. Thanks. Okay, Mavis. Okay, house to house. Um, are you going to sustain it? Is that scalable? Do you do it yourself? or you have a team that does it. And um, don't you think if you are targeting some people outside of your environment, you can do some, you can do more. Now, what I'm, the point I'm trying to draw to you there is you should think about how to take that brand online. People can always order for it from a different location and you send it to them through delivery, through post, something. Um, house to house is good, powerful, but it won't give you 
the much needed results that you should have if we're doing it with a wider audience, trust me. Social media is a great tool. Now you don't even need to use, uh, you don't even need to use, you don't even need to run ads. And Google Business Profile also is, could be a very powerful tool. We are going to be talking about Google Business Profile in one of the sessions. So think about that, give that a thought, Marvis. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay, I'm looking out for questions. Please, attendance is gonna be dropped right now. Please fill it correctly so that you don't miss out um, on anything. Thank you so much, Ayesha. Uh, and the links have been shared for you to learn some more. Thank you so much, um, Simplis. Gary, how does one get funding? Okay, so you may need to reach out to different funding organizations to get funding for your business, for your brand. Impactor is a non-profit organization, so we don't have funds. We are also looking for funds. <laughs> As if you have any partner that wants to give us money, please bring them to us, okay? Gary, thank you for asking. Um, Faidatsu, how do you create automatic text to welcome customers to contact, to contact you? Okay, so if you're using Google My Business, this uh, an automated message there. So what you need to do there is just to edit it. Same thing with um, Facebook Messenger, right? You just need to set it up. You need to set it up so that, you need to set it up um, so that it responds to whoever messages you on Facebook Messenger, for that you need to check that particular setting, but maybe you can check YouTube for that. Thank you for asking. Thank you, Kanuma. All right. Okay, so I have no questions. Please drop the attendance. Thank you, Latifa, Latifatu. All right, so if you have any questions, I'm still here. And please make your, um, fill in your correct name so that you don't miss your certificate. And we're having our next session on LYLF. That's gonna be on 21st of April. 21st should be on Monday. Am I correct? No, on Friday. So 21st is Friday, same time, 2.30 p.m. West African time. Ghanaians is going to be 1.30 p.m. for you guys, okay? So keep a date with us. We're going to be doing another very interesting topic that you don't want to miss on creating an effective digital marketing plan. Planning is powerful. Planning is very necessary for anything. So keep a date, same time, on Friday, okay? Any other questions? And uh, this is a big shout out to the organizers, LYLF Ghana. Thank you so much. And a big shout out to the, my team members. Um, Judith, a big shout out to um, a big shout out to Diana and um, Simplis and Sandra and everyone that was here with us. Okay, so enjoy the rest of your day. It seems I don't have any questions. Okay, so see you guys on Friday and then bye.